Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Ward, who has been nicknamed the Blood Detective, for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. That's right. Yeah. Now, Dr. Ward, you also hold several degrees and certifications, including board certifications in nutrition. Okay, today's topic is heart disease. Right. And we re received a bunch of questions over our email. One we picked out was, recently my doctor told me that my cholesterol levels are high. I've never had high cholesterol and I eat red meat once a week. I exercise by jogging, lifting weights, I even do yoga twice a week. My doctor wants me to go on Lipitor but I've read serious problems that this drug can that. have. Yeah. What do you think is causing my high cholesterol? Okay. Uh, we don't have this lady's name. We don't have a name. Okay, so I don't know if it's a man or a woman. It doesn't really matter. Uh, first of all, we know that cholesterol is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Generally speaking, the higher one's cholesterol, the higher the risk of cardiovascular disease. And interestingly, the lower one's cholesterol, below 150, the higher the risk of certain cancers. But that's another topic. Hmm. So getting back to this, uh, not all high cholesterol or hypercholesterolemia, high cholesterol, is genetic. If one's total cholesterol is above 300, it probably is very strongly genetic, which means passed on by okay. you know, one or both parents. And that doesn't mean we can't do anything about it. One option would be using medications like the statin class of medications, which include, in this case, Lipitor. So Lipitor is a cholesterol-lowering medication. It tends to lower LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol, uh, among other things uh, in terms of lipid control. But... Um, the question is raised here whether or not it's uh, all that's needed and or if there are issues with it. Now, this is a person here that said they're, you know, they, they, they're trying exercise, they're doing yoga, they're lifting weights, they're jogging, they've got the aerobic activity in there too. So why isn't their cholesterol responding? Well, maybe the exercise that you're doing is not uh, appropriate or intense enough because usually intense, shorter duration exercise, let's say about 20 to 25 minutes, High, um, you know, high intensity. energy output. Yeah, exactly, high intensity where your heart, uh, heart, um, heart rate averages between about seventy and eighty percent of one's heart rate max. And there's more information on that on the website. You have to get that intensity in there for lipid burning. So let's assume that uh, that's what you're doing, uh, and still your cholesterol is uh, is not going down. Well, we want to look at the diet a lot more more carefully. Saturated fat in the diet, almost everyone knows, is, is the main um, uh, trigger of higher cholesterol in the body. A cholesterol in the diet itself actually doesn't raise cholesterol in the body too much. It's saturated fats. But also sugar can raise cholesterol, and also the particular type of, of, of unhealthy fat called triglycerides. So. If this particular individual has high cholesterol, but there's also high triglycerides, it may be persistently elevated because there's a blood sugar issue that wasn't really re revealed. This is very common. And we so, could see this through the blood detective work that you do. Yeah, right. So blood detective basically is, again, this nickname that I have for looking deeply. And I have a technology called blood detective where I put the results of a patient's blood work in, in the uh, computer program. And it helps me figure out and narrow down what one's needs are. So in a case like this, if someone, or perhaps it's like this, if someone's triglycerides were high along with total cholesterol, we need to think blood sugar. Uh, and my, my program would tell me, the software blood detective would tell me to run uh, a glucose, blood sugar, and also what's called a hemoglobin A1C. And if that hemoglobin A1C or blood glucose are in the higher end of the normal range or just frankly abnormal, there's no way that cholesterol is going down unless you fix the blood sugar issue. issue. So what we would do there is focus on, let's say, low glycemic foods which would be consistent with like cardiovascular protective foods or you know um, heart healthy foods, but there has to be some more attention to those foods that are on the lower end of the glycemic scale, which by definition is a food that when you eat it doesn't cause such dramatic changes in blood sugar by stimulating insulin production, which can influence blood cholesterol levels. So just assuming it's from the diet may be a mistake. Again, 10, maybe 20% of the time, diet is the main factor. But 80% of the time, on average, it's not the main factor. So maybe uh, that that person genetically, again, needs that more intense exercise or there's a blood sugar issue. Now, the other um, concern is that blood cholesterol could go up because of any number of other health problems. 
Cholesterol is an antioxidant. That actually means it has a health benefit to a point, but too much of a good thing can clog your arteries. So, so picture an artery, mm -hmm. and maybe there's inflammation from an autoimmune process or some stressor in the body, some toxin, who knows what. The liver naturally makes all the cholesterol the body needs. If you zero out every bit of uh, saturated fat and cholesterol in your diet, you'll still have cholesterol in your body because your liver and many other cells make it, but the liver is the major source. So if there's damage in blood vessel walls, the liver kind of knows this. There's all these neurohormonal signals that, that happen in the body, and the liver may make more cholesterol to patch up the inflammation on the inside of those tubes. But if you don't reduce that, then you have that cholesterol building, 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 and then you get occlusion you know, over time, and that's, of course, an, an issue. So we would look for reasons uh, of oxidative stress, various dietary factors, stress factors, environmental factors that can cause the body to be too oxidatively challenged, which have the body raise the cholesterol levels. So the answer to lowering cholesterol has to be fundamentally based on finding out why the cholesterol is elevated. And when I say cholesterol, I mean many, many, many different blood fats. So I want to segue into... Uh, real quickly, a very important test for blood lipids, lipids or blood fats, mm -hmm. called a VAP or VAP panel. And that's a blood test done by every commercial lab in the United States, but it checks six or seven other blood fats that most doctors never check. And the test is far more accurate. The reason I mention this is because the total cholesterol is the total as the name implies, of other forms of cholesterol. Depending on what combinations of lipids or cholesterol types are high, different nutritional products or foods may be more appropriate for managing that. So if you think you've tried what you needed to do for, for you know, this person's high cholesterol, we need to look a little deeper. Okay? Most blood fats are lowered with omega-3 fatty acids like fish oil or flaxseed oil or blue-green algae. And this person may or may not be taking omega-3s. And if you are, you need to find out if that's the right dose. You see two, three, four, six, even ten grams of omega-3 fats may be necessary to effectively lower lipids, blood fats. And um, there's also vitamin E that can lower uh, certain types of blood fats and raise the good cholesterol or the HDL. I like to think of it as the happy cholesterol for H. It's a good way to remember it. Okay. So again, depending on which lipid, there's different nutrients. Um, just quickly, too, red rice yeast is kind of common. I don't find that that works, but other people may. Different nutrients are appropriate to, depending on what combination of blood fats are elevated. If you've tried the general things like reducing saturated fat in your diet, removing all trace of trans fats, removing refined and processed sugars, even gluten can, can raise lipid levels. So in, uh, the, in a blood detective sort of way, in our integrated approach here, we're always going to be looking for what that individual needs. Their lab work may reveal other needs aside from the blood lipids, which say, oh, if we fix all this, then the blood lipids respond. Now, let's end by talking about Lipitor for a second. So if all else fails, then, of course, uh, we want to lower cardiovascular disease. and may want to resort to, uh, you know, statin medication, and, and that's true. They're not without risk. Um, the one thing we should realize about statins, like Lipitor, is that they cause malabsorption of some very important nutrients. Strangely, one of them is CoQ10 or coenzyme Q10. It's called ubiquinone. Now, lower ubiquinone levels are associated with increased cardiovascular risk. So it's kind of odd that that's one of the, uh, you know, the nutrients that are depleted with the Lipitor. But Lipitor also causes issues with other fat-soluble nutrients. Coenzyme Q10 is one of those fat-soluble nutrients. But beta-carotene is another one. And fish oils is yet another one. And then vitamins A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble, so nutrition can get pretty screwed up with the use of Lipitor. So, but in the hands of someone who knows about these interactions, and we've discussed drug nutrient mm -hmm. interactions in our other video, it's important to be mindful of that and then correct what we find. Um, I should say too, if we can improve the, the lipid parameters, lower cholesterols, all those different lipids, with uh, lifestyle, exercise, stress reduction, proper sleep, water, you know, all those types of things, and we get a certain normalcy of the blood cholesterol, mm -hmm. and we get the same lowering with Lipitor, studies have shown that there's still more cardiovascular risk and incidence of heart attacks and strokes in the Lipitor group, even though the levels on the blood are the same as if you do it naturally, meaning how you normalize something matters. So, again, a bit of a loaded question because it's not as simple as just, you know, 
sometimes it's clearing out the diet. But even if it is genetic, that just means genetically we need to be mindful of what a person ne a person's needs are, and we need to somehow uh, detect, blood detect, and experiment with a couple of different ways for managing things. So that's basically my, my view on, on Lipitor and, and how to lower blood fats. And I think in general that people would want to do it in a a healthier way. Yeah, rather you would than think so. Medication. You know, that's the whole premise of, of what we do here. But uh, I think we want to start with natural means first, mm -hmm. and then when all else fails. And why don't we just end by saying too that, at least here, when we do uh, recommend uh, statin medications like Lipitor, we almost never recommend the traditional doses that might be used by other physicians without even thinking about it. Uh, you start 10, at a lower 20, dose? 25. Yeah, I mean, it's very common that uh, here we might use, let's say, 5 milligrams of Lipitor every other day. Okay. And with nutrition, we get uh, that combination, that nutritional synergism, we get you know phenomenal uh, effects with just that. And we don't necessarily always have to have the person on uh, the statin medication. Uh, I know recently there was a, uh, a, a, a discovery that there was a batch of, of Lipitor that had glass shards in it. So my point is that that's mm. not to create mass hysteria, but, you know, it's just another reason to say try to do things naturally as possible first because you just never know with, uh, you know, the, uh, the pharmaceuticals. But we want to keep them on the list of considerations. Okay. Great. Thanks.